Well, good morning. I want to welcome everyone this morning. I am Mark McCard, president of Nebraska Farm Bureau. I also a fourth generation farmer in Central City, Nebraska. So we are, uh, we are in the middle of planting season and it's going well for us. I just want to thank you for being here. I want to thank our uh, members of our congressional delegation, uh, Congressman Jeff Fortenberry, uh, Congressman Don Bacon and Congressman Adrian Smith for joining us today in this conversation. While unable to join us, I also want to thank U.S. Senator Deb Fisher, Senator Ben Sass for offering their support. And there's going to be a quote and a short video from them as well. Also, we have joining us uh, Brian Salone and our partner at Nebraska a Chamber of Conference here today. Looking forward to hearing their thoughts as well. I just want to line out just kind of the purpose of uh, this meeting today. Uh, we are gathering here today to launch the Nebraskans for tax truth. As you know that uh, President Biden and some other members of Congress have been floating proposals that would increase all kinds of tax, especially federal tax, particularly capital gains tax, estate tax, uh, corporate tax. And we've come together because we believe and we're very concerned that the message that's actually coming out of Washington DC on these producer, on these proposals don't do justice to explaining the potential negative impact that these tax hikes could have on Nebraska family farms, businesses, and our communities. And I would say for the future growth of our state, a lot of these proposals would just be very difficult. We have a pretty general message we're gonna talk about this morning. Uh, we know that tax policy can be complicated. We know that not, not everybody's gonna dig into it like our organizations at the chamber and Nebraska Farm Bureau and our legislators. But the fact of the matter is, is that we need federal tax policy that allows Nebraska farmers and ranchers and Nebraska businesses to continue to succeed and grow our state. So we need to be the economic driver when we have high taxes, that just doesn't happen. Increasing capital gains tax, increase in estate tax, uh, increase in corporate tax, does not uh, work for us, it does the opposite. It works against us when we're creating growth and creating jobs. Just bringing back to agriculture quickly, uh, elimination of stepped up basis uh, would increase capital gains tax. Uh, that's really in, in my mind and farmer's mind, that's code for the government saying, we're gonna make it more difficult and more costly for you to pass on the farm and ranch to the next generation. Uh, it should not be that if there's a death in the family, in a family farmer, a generational transfer, no family should find itself having to have a discussion about whether they're gonna to have to sell off some of their property to pay their federal uh, tax bill. That's just not right. It's, I, I would call it un-American quite honestly. Today, 97% of US farms and ranches are in family owned operations. These are multi-generational. And if we want to grow Nebraska and we want to grow agriculture, the proposals that are being floated around again in Washington, DC, that will work against us. Our action item today is what we want to communicate is that the goal is to build support for tax provisions that protect our family farms and our businesses in Nebraska to help them grow. We want to work with like-minded individuals that are interested in joining us to move forward. And we encourage Nebraskans to join our brand new website, nebraskansfortaxtruth.org, sign our petition to push for federal tax policy that works for Nebraska. Again, I wanna thank, thank everyone for being on the call. And I wanna turn it over to Brian Sloan from the Nebraska Chamber to give us some of your thoughts, Brian. Well, Mark, thank you. And thank you to the Farm Bureau and thank you to the congressional delegation here today. Um, this, is, this is about as important as it comes it's at a very critical time for the state. Um, I've spent my life uh, in, in the tax area, tax policy area. And right now for, for Nebraska, we have, we have an opportunity to come out of this pandemic that the economic effect of the pandemic has, has been significant in Nebraska, just like it has been across the United States. But we're, we're poised as, as Nebraskans to keep Nebraska competitive, but we will always lead in Nebraska 
with our small businesses, with our family-owned businesses, whether it's in agriculture, whether it's downtown businesses, or it's our manufacturing sector. Agriculture and manufacturing, for instance, are two largest industries in the state. Um, the pandemic has created an economic reset, and, and we have to have these industries and these jobs lead our economy out of this. And I just, as, as a tax policy person, I can't think of a worse time in American history for the federal government to suddenly tax small businesses and corporations just at the moment in time where those, those small businesses will be leading our economy out of the pandemic. And we have a generational opportunity to bring manufacturing and logistics back to this state um, from foreign countries after they'd migrated their, year, their, their decades ago. Um, these, these taxes uh, would, would put a stop to, to our economic development and it would, it would harm our family-owned businesses. Um, it, it's just hard to justify in this current environment and, and, it, and it's really important that organizations like the Farm Bureau and the Chambers and others um, work with our con congressional delegation to try to make sure we have sound and fair tax policy at, at a really important time for Nebraska. So with that, I, I'm, Mark, I'm gonna turn it back to you and, and turn it back to the Congressman. Thank you, Brian, I appreciate that. We're gonna start out with Congressman Fortenberry. Uh, give us a few of your thoughts on uh, the conversation today. Well, thank you very much, Mark, for inviting me to participate in the Nebraska Farm Bureau as well as the Nebraska Chamber of Commerce. The decision before us today is, is this, whether we stand with the American farm family and allow the intergenerational opportunity to grow food and provide for a vibrant ecosystem of rural life, or whether or not we stand by and watch as mega corporations, mega hedge funds, and large trust funds gobble up more, more land because of tax considerations. That's not right. The other night I went to see uh, my daughter perform in a band concert at her high school. Um, an older couple stopped me as I was walking out. And they said, Jeff, can we talk to you about these tax provisions that are coming down the pike in Washington? We're farmers. And I looked at them and I said, you don't look so wealthy to me. And we all laughed. The point being, although you may be providing for yourself with the work of your two hands, as the farmer does, a reasonable or a moderate income, because the underlying asset has been inflated by other factors, that's not your fault. And the inability to pass that along to your children to preserve the great American tradition of expertise and stewardship that comes from knowing how to farm the land, as well as the opportunity for large scale ownership and diversification. This tax code, these potential tax code changes could result in the further concentration of land in the fewer and fewer hands, undermine the whole prospect for vibrancy in rural communities and lose that intergenerational opportunity and expertise to grow our food, which is the main thing that America makes because of our competitive advantage and again, the stewardship, the value of stewardship of our farmers and ranchers. So I'm pleased to uh, stand with you all today to re-raise our story, just how important agriculture is, the farm family is, not just to Nebraska's economic well-being, but to the well-being of America and the entire world as we provide food security for ourselves with the lowest grocery prices in the world, as well as food security for those uh, around the world who are facing uh, land degradation, starvation, or twisted forms of nationalism. This is also about our national security. So there are a lot of implications to tax code changes. I'm grateful to the Nebraska Farm Bureau and the Nebraska Chamber for gathering us together so we can have a collective voice to tell the American farm story and how these things that are coming out of Washington that are poorly understood have ripple effects that could, inter that could undermine one of the greatest enterprises that we have in our great country. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Congressman uh, uh, Fortberry. Well said, appreciate your thoughts there. I'm gonna move now to uh, Congressman uh, Don Bacon. Uh, thanks for joining us, Don, and uh, the floor is yours. Well, thank you. Uh, I appreciate Mark McCarg. He's uh, doing a great job in the Farm Bureau, a great friend. Brian Sloan doing a great job on our uh, Nebraska Chamber. Also a great friend, and I appreciate my two colleagues who I know work very hard uh, for their districts and for our farmers and ranchers, and I appreciate that. You know, I was raised on a family farm. I remember my grandfather and my father, my uncle, 
very worried about how they were going to pass on that family or the farm and keep it within the family. Tax considerations can be very dominating to a family uh, faced with a, a large inheritance tax. So I know this firsthand. Uh, I also appreciate going back to my roots, being part of the Ag Committee. And just recently, I traveled throughout Nebraska just to expand my background and understanding, working with farmers and ranchers, knowing that I'm on the committee, I can apply these lessons learned. And this is what I heard from most of the ranchers and some of the farmers, a grave concern in two areas. First, a lot of concern with the 30 by 30. What is that gonna to mean to those family farms that are gonna withhold 30% of the land? Uh, we don't know the details of that, but I heard it almost at every stop. What does this mean? And then the second part is the taxes. Uh, you know, raising the capital gains tax, raising the corporate tax, getting rid of stuffed up bases uh, has a profound impact on many of our cattle ranches. That's where I was just recently, I went to three different ranchers, each of them very concerned about what this is gonna mean for their family operation. Uh, I've read some of the numbers. You get rid of stuffed up bases, you're talking about a 300% tax on land that they inherited. I mean, it's just an incredible number, which will force many of these family farms and ranchers to sell off portions of their farm, and then their operation gets smaller. That's not right. That shouldn't be uh, where the federal government uh, is at. But let's talk about what's really going on here, in my view. Uh, our normal budget for the federal government is four and a half trillion dollars. Uh, the administration now is committed to six trillion dollars in additional spending above and beyond the four and a half trillion. You're talking a ten and a half trillion dollar budget this year is what they're proposing. And they want to pay for it by raising taxes. So this is truly a, a tax and spend plan. And so the, the stuffed up bases is, I, it's a grave concern to our agriculture community. It should be. Uh, we cannot allow this to be uh, to, to be executed by the Biden team and Pelosi team. I got grave concerns on the corporate tax. Going from 21% to 28% means we're going to be paying more business taxes than communist China charges on its corporations. I don't think about that. We're going to have a higher tax rate than communist China. And then when you add in the state corporate taxes, 31 of our states will have the highest corporate taxes in the world. And because of that, the, cha the U.S. Chamber and the National Association of Manufacturers have said that we will lose a million jobs because of the corporate tax alone. That is bad for America. And as Brian Soltz said, bad for time we're trying, trying to come out of COVID. So the corporate tax, uh, the stuffed up basis and capital gains uh, is a dagger to our, our, our Midwest, our farming community, uh, to our uh, manufacturing jobs. And it's being done to pay for a high government spending plan. Uh, so we're going to work hard over the next few months to protect uh, Nebraska. And uh, obviously, these uh, proposals are bad for Nebraska. So with that, uh, with that, I yield back. And I just thank Mark for a chance to uh, join. Well, uh, thank you, Congressman Bacon, again, for those words. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, Congressman Smith. Congressman Smith, as many of you know, is on the Ways and Means Committee. Uh, he's going to have a unique uh, spot in this conversation. And uh, uh, Adrian, I, I know you're going to fix this all for us, but maybe just tell us how you're going to do that. Well, thank you, Mark. Thank you to my colleagues, uh, everyone joining here today, the Farm Bureau, the State Chamber. I'm glad we have this opportunity to launch this effort. Uh, it is so important to our economy. Uh, it's important to opportunity for the future. Uh, let, let me point out that even Barack Obama understood the need for us to be competitive with our tax policy in the world marketplace. Uh, let, let me say that. Uh, to see all of these tax increases being thrown at the wall, I mean, there are so many, it, it, it's hard to believe they're even serious about it, but I have to believe they are. And uh, this is far left policy. When, when you drill down on on the, the death tax uh, alone and, and uh, repealing the stepped up basis. Um, you know, I, I think it's so reasonable to keep the stepped up basis uh, to maintain continuity uh, among our producers uh, with their individual operations. And I, I visited a, an agribusiness manufacturing uh, company a while back who told me that uh, the death tax is, is likely to devastate their business. Those aren't my words. Those aren't my uh, own observations. That, that's 
the, the company owners themselves, uh, third generation operators right now that uh, are doing a fantastic job. They're not big. They, they might have 15 or 20 employees, uh, but they're certainly important to our community and it's uh, you know important to, uh, to their livelihoods. And so I'm glad to uh, have sent a letter along with uh, Don and Jeff and 130 other members uh, to Speaker Pelosi and Leader McCarthy uh, that you know, highlights our concerns about repealing the stepped up basis and tax and capital gains at death uh, in particular. And uh, we, we know that repealing the step up, stepped up basis is a, a backdoor increase on, on the death tax to, to where it uh, really um, takes away from the effectiveness of, of the, the exemption um, the, the exemption was basically a compromise. I, I would prefer to get rid of the death tax. I think there's a, a number of reasons, policy, good policy reasons to entirely get rid of the death tax. It's a double tax. It's punitive. It, it, it is uh, harmful in, in many ways. But when you look at, at the overall objective here, I mean, you're, you're talking about the need to go back a couple generations to determine the value of assets, uh, you know, uh, an existing appraisal for the existing asset uh, in, its, in, it, in its current form uh, is complex enough. I, I can't imagine having to go back uh, um, decades, uh, decades more than likely to, uh, to determine this. So um, we've, we've got a lot of work to do to, to push back on, on these terrible proposals. And, you know, it, it's interesting to to look at uh, President Biden's objectives. Of, he says he wants to get money out into the economy, but this is collecting money from certain parts of the economy so that he can uh, then uh, take, take the, the, the dollars and, and probably give them to uh, more politically favored groups. Uh, I, I just uh, struggle to think that that is good policy and even more so I struggle to think that it's policy that creates more opportunity for folks across America. I think we've done a great job with, uh, with the tax reform that's been in place. And before the pandemic, it was proving uh, to, to be creating opportunity to increase wages. And that upward pressure on wages uh, before the pandemic, I think, was far more effective uh, for workers themselves than, than a group of politicians trying to uh, uh, pick a number for an, an increased uh, wage mandate. So again, I appreciate the opportunity to be with all of you here today and I look forward to gathering in person uh, one day soon as well. Thank you. Well, thank you, Adrian. Uh, again, uh, good words to kind of frame up this conversation. Uh, before we get into question and answers, as I said that uh, uh, Senator Deb Fisher and, and Senator Sass had a couple statements. I think we're gonna have, a, we have a video from Senator Sass here. So this is definitely my first ever digital press conference. I guess we have last year, 2020, to thank for that. So first off, I want to thank the groups who are working so hard to organize stuff like this, the Nebraska Farm Bureau and the Chamber. I'm proud to partner with both of you in shining a light on the problems with President Biden's tax and spend, and then tax more and spend more policies. Uh, here in Nebraska, we believe that government doesn't grow the economy. Innovators develop new products, moms and dads grocery shopping for their kids, farmers and ranchers building their operation. That's how we grow here. That's how we improve society. That's how we love our neighbor. We're built on our small businesses, whether we're talking about the cafe or shop in town or any one of the thousands of farm and ranch operations across our great state, the breadbasket of the world. And because these issues we're talking about today directly affect those small businesses, at its core, this is a Nebraska-wide issue. So when we start talking about some of the policies that we're seeing come down from Washington, and again, that language, down from Washington, that's not how it's supposed to work around here, it starts to get a little bit scary. So bumping up corporate and estate taxes, eliminating the stepped up basis, this is terrible, misguided stuff. And it's just about the last thing we need right now. We're just starting to come out of the pandemic that has drastically changed everything about day-to-day -day life. It's been hard, obviously. We don't recover from these economic and health crises by increasing taxes on the very people who worked and are working so hard to keep their farms and ranches going and their small businesses open amidst a pandemic. It just doesn't make any sense. 
So we faced a lot of uncertainty, but our job here is to feed the world, and we didn't let coronavirus, COVID, get in the way of doing our work. These changes strike deeper than just hurting our economy, though. There's more to it than that. They threaten farms that have been in families for generations. This isn't just an economic, productive livelihood. It's a way of life. And because these tax increases produce real fear for farmers and ranchers and small businesses, they're, they're worried that they're gonna have to sell to pay the tax. We need to fight back against that. Terry Christensen, a farmer from Minden, has a farm that's been in the family for decades. And when the time comes for his parents to pass the farm along to his generation, he worries how they'll be able to cover Biden's new tax bill. They shouldn't have to be worried about that. These family-run operations aren't just a job, as we've said. They're a tradition. They're filled with aspiration and inspiration. They want to leave the next generation better off. America was built by people like that. America was built off of these types of traditions and the hard work that it takes to build. And we owe it to a whole bunch of Nebraska families to keep pushing back against taxes that take money out of parents' pockets. And we need to call out these dopey bureaucratic regulations that are working to reshape the foundation of our economy and society in Washington's image. I'm happy to sit on the Senate Finance Committee and I have an assignment on the Subcommittee on Taxation. So these are issues that are near and dear to me and in my office and on my team, we're gonna keep working and having conversations like the one we're having today. It's helpful for us, not just to communicate with you in general uh, and to make sure you know that we're aligned on these issues, but also to set the stage for you to continue tutoring us in the particular so we can push back on some of these uh, dopey regulations and silly legislative proposals. Let's find more trade markets. Let's cut red tape. Let's keep working hard. Let's keep feeding the world. Go Big Red. So, so I believe we have a quote from uh, Senator Deb Fisher that we're gonna put up. Just again, reiterating uh, a number of things that uh, were said uh, already this morning. Well, I think that gets us through our list of speakers. Uh, we're going to open it up for a, a time of question and answer. I know uh, uh, Brian Sloan did have to uh, jump to another meeting, and I believe uh, maybe Jeff Fortenberry did as well. But uh, we've got a number of questions that have come in, and so we're going to we're going to work through those and uh, try to get some uh, uh, questions answered, and then uh, we'll let people get on with their day. So, Craig. Yeah, Mark, if I could, I'm just going to go ahead and remind you, if you're listening on the phone, and we do have some folks who are on the phone, uh, there's a little bit different process for you to ask your question. So I want to make sure that we give that opportunity to you. So if you're on the phone, you can press, dot, press 9 to raise your hand, and that'll show up on our end. So we can make sure we get you in queue. And then when it, we call on you, uh, you need to press 6 to unmute your phone. So I just wanted to make sure, Mark, we started with that for those who are on the phone. And then uh, for those of you who are in the webinar itself, you know, please just post your question in the Q&A or raise your hand and we'll unmic you so you can go ahead and ask your question. So we will move to the first question. First question comes from Chris Stum. Could you guys explain more about Biden's tax plan and how it would affect not just farmers and ranchers, but also Nebraskans, all Nebraskans? That's an open-ended mark for whoever. Hey, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll lead off on that. Defer, uh, defer to the seniority. <laughs> hard to decide where to begin uh, with, with that uh, with that question because uh, you know the the president promised to get rid of the the tax reform efforts that that we put in place in 2017. Um, he also proposed to get rid of or, or to not raise taxes on the middle class, and, and you can't have it both ways. Well, the president, uh, I realize he, he's been allowed to a lot of uh, a leeway on a lot of his statements. Uh, but, you know, as, as pointed out earlier, on the corporate side, uh, we would take the rate back up to be so uncompetitive that we would likely see companies once again leave our country to go to lower tax jurisdictions uh, around the world as they were doing vigorously before the, the, the tax reform bill that we passed, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, TCJA. And uh, now you look at the temporary nature now out of the House, um, 
we, we proposed permanent tax relief. Uh, by the time I got over to the Senate and conference and everything, there were provisions, especially for individuals, uh, that were made uh, to be temporary. Um, that was disappointing for me, but that's part of the process. So we have individual tax relief, temporary, that needs to be permanent. Right? And make no mistake, if we don't make that permanent, there will be significant tax increases on the middle class. Uh, so let, let me be very clear on that. So uh, yes, we here in Nebraska, as an agriculture state, we talk about the death tax impacting farmers and ranchers. It impacts everyone. Uh, it impacts real estate owners all across America, small businesses, but, but especially it is damaging when, when say, a, a family operation to pay the death tax would, would be expected to sell off some of the assets. Well, in this day and age, uh, you, you can't just uh, sell off part of the farm and, and expect to have a successful operation. You can't sell off part of a small manufacturing company, or even large for that matter, uh, it, it, expecting to have a, a viable operation uh, following that, uh, that type of transaction as well. So there are just uh, so, many, so many things that I think are bad for uh, our economy, bad for creating opportunity for the future. And, and those are just some, some of the examples. I'll just add in, <clears throat> totally with Adrian Owl's comments here, I would just add a comment in agreement with what he's saying. You know, our state's been working hard right now to try to figure out ways to reduce property tax. You hear that everywhere you go, and I, I see it myself. We're trying to work on ways on the income tax. Uh, if you want to bring in new businesses, you know, having a more competitive income tax is also important. So we're dealing with property tax, income tax. Now the federal government says we're going to raise your corporate taxes and get rid of stuff to a basis. This is putting more and more weight <clears throat> on the Nebraska farmer, the Nebraska rancher, the Nebraska business owner. Now let's come back to one of my original points. You know, the Chamber and the National Association of Manufacturers says we're going to lose a million jobs if this plan goes through. That affects the middle class. Uh, and so this is going to put a tremendous burden on Nebraska because we're not just talking corporate stuff to basis. We're already trying to deal with property tax and an income tax. It's all cumulative. And so it's, it just adds to the weight on the average Nebraskan in a bad way. Okay, Mark, uh, just, just a reminder again for those on the phone, I apologize, you need to hit star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute. So I just want to clarify that for our folks on the phone. So I apologize for that. So it's star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute. Uh, we'll go to our next question. This one comes from Susan Littlefield. Susan says, I've heard from a few farmers that they feel this is all tied in a bow with 30 by 30, President Biden's 30 by 30 climate initiative. And then she says, finding new ways to decrease agriculture in the U.S. by having a tax that would not allow farms to be passed on. And here's an option for you in 3030. Uh, any thoughts on that? I might just jump in there real quick. Uh, again, we are concerned about 30 by 30, but one of the common threads here is that we are just getting very little information from the Biden administration about both of these kinds of things. There'll be a statement put out, uh, and, but very little detail. And we have asked over and over for detail on 30 by 30. Uh, clearly, we're concerned about these potential tax rates, uh, hikes, but it's just still very unclear. And so I would say from my perspective here at the Nebraska Farm Bureau, uh, the, the common theme is that uh, we just don't have good information of what they really mean. Uh, Representative, I echo, I'll echo Mark on this. There's very little detail, but we already know a 30 by 30 for Nebraska it can't be good when you only have uh, just a small percentage of land that's federal owned at already. So this is talking, this is dealing with land confiscation in some way, if you're going to make this work in Nebraska. So I don't see any goodness in Nebraska for, for a 30 by 30 plan. Yeah, I, I uh, let me just uh, certainly associate myself uh, with what's been said about that. And, and I, I find it highly inappropriate that the president would sign an executive order with no details. That leaves us expecting and planning on the most extreme measures to be taken by the administration. I mean, there's evidence of that with, with other topics too. Uh, but this 30 by 30, uh, it, it's a land grab, a water grab to power grab. 
And so I, I, have, I have to think that the, the president is not sensitive uh, to the viability of agriculture operations. If he's uh, uh, waiting uh, kind of behind, behind the next corner to, to take the land, um, I, I think this is devastating to local governments who are, are struggling to make ends meet and, and provide the necessary services that local government is expected to provide. Uh, remove, you know, that's basically removing uh, 30 by 30 would, would effectively remove property from the tax rolls, further concentrating our already high property tax in Nebraska on fewer taxpayers. That's bad policy. And uh, I, I told uh, the, the uh, former uh, Secretary of the Interior um, appointee, I said, you know, we're, we're noted to have relatively few federal lands in Nebraska, and I hope we keep it that way. Uh, our, our friends to the west of us, they, their percentage of, uh, of ground that's uh, in the federal uh, ownership uh, causes a lot of complications. And I think we should avoid that. And especially when we know that uh, individual owners are the best stewards of the land. Uh, we don't need the federal government taking over uh, all sorts of, of, of lands across Nebraska and, and across America. Thank you. Greg, what do we have next? Yep, the next question mark comes from Chris Clayton. Uh, this is a more general question for anybody, but the question is, the largest landowners in Nebraska are out-of-state billionaires, Ted Turner and Bill Gates. Do you see any tax change that could lead to the largest landowners selling land to new farmers? Well, what do you, what do you think, guys? Any thoughts there? Uh, Pam, I, I don't, but go ahead. I, I would suggest, uh, <laughs> and I, as I've uh, looked around our, our county website at uh, various uh, property tax uh, amounts, um, there, I, I, let me just say that I hope the legislature can address this. Um, I, I feel that I did my part at the federal level in, in working to uh, maintain the full deductibility of, of ag land property taxes. Um, but I, I think there's a lot of, of work to be done there. Just my personal opinion, and I salute the Farm Bureau uh, for uh, having this as a priority. And, and I just really hope the legislature uh, can, can get serious about uh, property tax relief. Um, I, I think there are um, examples in, in the tax code that really discourage or, or uh, uh, actually might even uh, skew the market, uh, the market value uh, of some property. So I hope that that can be addressed uh, as well, uh, because there's there's a lot of work to do on the property tax fund. And, and I think property tax, uh, at least for us, uh, would appear to me to be one of the leading tax policies that uh, uh, may or may not encourage someone to sell to, uh, say, a younger operator. Um, just because of its significant bite, and, and especially uh, as uh, other uh, taxes might persist too, but um, with a with a slower or more challenging um, agriculture economy at times, um, that you know income tax, a federal income tax, has has less impact there. So just to point that out, it doesn't seem fair, uh, Adrian, and I say it to Mark here and listeners that our farmers. You compare what they're paying in Iowa, South Dakota, and Wyoming, we're really putting an unfair burden on our farmers to compete with a lot more costs because of the property tax. I was talking to a friend of mine in Wyoming when I was in Cheyenne uh, visiting an Air Force base there, and he had ranch land in Wyoming and in Nebraska. He said he was paying three times more property tax per acre in Nebraska, so we ended up selling it. I think it gets to the question, as you point, folks are selling because they can't afford it, and then, and then we have people of maybe wealthier means can, can't afford that. Um, but it's something that's unacceptable for us. It's not something we can solve overnight, but we gotta keep, I think we gotta keep incrementally making it better for our farmers on the property tax area. Thank you. The really interesting thing about this conversation uh, about stepped up basis, potentially uh, uh, taking that away, raising our state tax. I believe that that fundamentally, when we get back to this last question, will, put more land into outside investors that have cash that they have made someplace else uh, to acquire that land instead of passing it on to the next uh, younger generation. If we're going to have to pay tax on that and sell it off, 
uh, clearly they don't have the money if they're going to sell it off. And so if they sell it off, uh, I think it provides a greater chance that outside investors will actually purchase that property. I think that this whole conversation is completely upside down if we think that uh, this new potential tax code is going to put ground into uh, more producers, young producers, I believe it's going to do the actually opposite effect. Great point. Yeah, when you, when you look at, uh, you know, increasing the capital gains tax, let's face it, the capital gains tax is a penalty uh, paid after a transaction. Um, increasing the capital gains tax, I think, will be chilling to the economy because people will, will tend to hold on to things longer. And, uh, you know, to to uh, encourage transactions that encourages some churn in the economy. And, and that I think makes the marketplace more vibrant and, and more opportunities out there and other taxes to be paid too. So I, I just, I, I cannot believe that they would reach so far in increasing so many taxes, but especially in the areas we have discussed, uh, it, it just defies common sense and economic sense and, and so I, I think we're making some headway on, on pushing back, but man, we, we cannot let up. And that's why I'm glad to join you here today. So I apologize. I, I need to uh, get moving here uh, to my next commitment, but uh, thank you again for, for all you're doing. I, and like I said, I look forward to gathering soon in person and continuing to, to fight. Well, Craig, I, I think we're about ready to wrap up. Do you have any more questions? I think we're good, Mark. That's all of them uh, that were in queue. Okay. Well, as, as we close, I would encourage you to go to NebraskansForTaxTruth.org. That is all one word. Uh, we are building this coalition along with the state chamber to uh, get the message out, sign this petition. We expect to uh, kind of broaden this coalition out but I, I do want to uh, uh, thank Congressman Bacon, thank for all those that have been on here, and also for the chamber, because this is not just an agricultural issue. Uh, we have businesses all across the state that are gonna find themselves in the exact same position. Uh, the company that I grow popcorn for, uh, it's a family operation. If something goes, goes wrong, how do you sell off part of a popcorn plant, and where am I gonna deliver my popcorn? So. Uh, it reaches into all aspects of Nebraska. So I would encourage people to sign up in the petition and uh, we will do what we can do to stop this uh, bad tax legislation. So thank you for being with us and uh, we will catch you another time around.